And I remember thinking, wow, why did she stop? And thinking if she doesn't think she can make a career as a concert pianist, then who will? Hi everyone, this is Anai, and today I will be talking about how to become a concert pianist. Now, this is a, a very catchy question, and it is a question that I get asked fairly often after concerts. Sometimes people come up to me, parents with their kids that play the piano, and ask me, do you think that they can become a concert pianist? I've also gotten it in a few comments here on YouTube where people kind of describe their situation to me and ask me whether it is possible to become a concert pianist or just what do I need to do in order to become a concert pianist? So today I want to kind of touch on that topic, which is very big and very complex and not that easy to answer, but I want to share my thoughts with you. So if you're interested in hearing that, then keep on watching. So as you can see, I'm not at home. I'm actually in the south of France right now. I'm playing at a festival, two concerts. The first one was two days ago and the second one is tonight. And full disclosure, I was actually planning on making a different video for you guys. I actually wanted to film the Chopin study opus 10 number four because that is a video that has been requested a lot from you guys, but I couldn't be in the hall for that long. And the time that I had in the hall, I had to use to actually warm up for my recital tonight. So I didn't get to film the excerpts I wanted to film for you on the piano. So I will be filming that in the coming weeks. So today I'm just uh, sliding this video in with my thoughts on what it takes and what you need and what the preconditions have to be in order to become a concert pianist. I want to start out by saying that whether I think it is possible to become a concert pianist and whether I think it is worth playing the piano and studying music and just getting into that world of piano music are two completely different things. When people ask me what it takes to become a concert pianist, what that means to me is what does it take to actually live off of being a concert pianist so to actually be a, a financially stable person just by performing in concert as a pianist and my answer always is that this is a, a very difficult job and a lot of things have to be in place for that to work out now as i said again this is not me saying that it is not worth starting the piano or learning the piano or playing the piano if those preconditions are not met, because I think this is one of the most valuable and great things that you can do. But I'm now really focusing on whether you can make this your sole profession. So first of all, let's just talk about age. If you're looking to actually become a, a professional pianist, you have to have started playing the piano at a fairly early age because it is very difficult to become a professional pianist if you start um, in your adult years. I think it's great if you start playing the piano in your adult years just for yourself or also to perform if you have income from a, a different source. But if you are looking to become a pianist, then this is something that you have to start early because you have to reach a certain level quite early on in your life. And I just quickly want to paint a picture for you because I'm not sure how aware you are of this, but there are hundreds and thousands of students that enter university or um, conservatory each year and start studying the piano. And they all play at an extremely high level. They are talented, they work hard. So all of that is already there, the level is there. And still, out of these thousands of piano students, only very, very few make a career as a concert pianist. And that's because, um, partly because of the times that we live in, and also partly because it is one of those artistic professions, just like being an actor or being a dancer, where it gets really, really narrow at the top. And there are only very few people at the top that can actually make it a career Whereas there are many people that love doing it, but it is very hard to turn it into your job. So I think it's quite clear that 
I believe, and I think that we could basically say that that's a fact, that you have to start very early on and you have to have the luck that you're studying with a great teacher quite early on. Now, what does early on mean? Most pianists, I would say, start between the age of five and eight or nine. There is the rare exception of pianists that start at the age of 12 or 13, but already that is quite rare. I know of two pianists that started kind of in their teens, um, but basically that's it. Everyone else started quite early on. And also, as I said, you need to really have a, a great teacher at a high level that is guiding you through this process. There is a, a famous young pianist that is actually kind of self-taught. His name is Luca de Bargue. He's a French pianist. Maybe you've heard of him. He was in a big competition and he's extremely talented. He's one of those rare examples of someone that kind of started late. But as I said, that is really the exception. Usually you do need a teacher to guide you through this and to really mentor you as you're developing your piano skills. But now let's presume that you've got all of that. You are talented, you have put in the work, you're a hard working individual, which of course is another one of those preconditions. You have to be willing to put in the time every day to practice multiple hours. Of course, this is one of those professions where being quick and being talented simply isn't enough. You really need to be putting in the hard work daily, especially at that young age. There are performers that have had uh, incredibly intense practice schedules in their younger years, in their childhood and in their teens, and then later on in their adult life, practice significantly less. So that is possible, although you still have to, of course, spend time daily um, at the instrument. But as I said, we have to be willing to put in the time and to put in that hard work. Otherwise, this profession is really not possible. You have to look at it like a like an athlete. You have to be in shape. You have to keep your fingers in shape. You have to keep your brain in shape. You have to actually keep your body and your stamina in shape. It really is a, a high performance profession and you have to train daily for it. But now having said that, let's presume that all of these preconditions are met and you have a university degree now, you've studied, you have all the knowledge that you need how do you become a concert pianist? And that is something that has changed a lot over the past decades. First of all, we have many more people that are actually playing piano and that are playing piano at a very high level. And secondly, the landscape of the music industry has changed as well. So back in the day, you would have um, incredibly talented pianists that would win a competition or would somehow get noticed in, in one way or another and then sign with a big agency and that was basically it. The big agencies were incredibly powerful, the powerful agents just needed to make 20 calls and you had an incredible tour planned for you and you played high level concerts and your career was basically made. And you yourself were more focused on the artistic side and just practicing and being great on stage and the manager did everything else. Now today, this isn't really possible anymore. The landscape has changed so much and I guess it has advantages and disadvantages. A disadvantage could be that, of course, it is kind of comfortable and easy if your sole responsibility is the artistic responsibility. That's also kind of what you love to do. That's what you are here to do. That's why you play the piano. So that maybe is a disadvantage of it now not being possible like that anymore. But the advantage, of course, is that you get to shape your career in a much stronger way and you get to actually have power and a, a say in how you're being presented. So today, you really have to be creative, I believe, if you're looking for a career as a performing musician. You have to have unique ideas, you have to know what your message is, you have to know what you want to say with the music and how you want to present yourself as an artist, not just musically how you want to present yourself, but what you actually stand for as an artist. And there's a lot of thought that has to go into that in order to get that career going as well. 
So today's successful young artists, I would argue, are also great networkers. They are great business people, businessmen and businesswomen that uh, really make sure to keep in touch with important people that really know how to sell themselves. They have great creative minds and they are actually salespeople. They know how to sell a product. Now, this might sound a little bit overwhelming and it can be at times, but I must say that I find this process very fun as well. I love sitting down and just brainstorming and thinking of new program concepts that I can make, thinking of concept albums that I can record, thinking of entirely new project ideas that I can create and that might be unique and that might be of value to the music world. I think that this process is actually really fun. I'm also someone that loves to be in touch with people and um, to meet new people, to speak with people. So the networking side of the job is something that I also actually like. Some people find it hard and exhausting, but to me, it actually is something that is also quite fun. Everything that I just said was focused on being a performing musician and um, creating a platform for yourself where you can actually perform and be a desired um, performing pianist. However, today it is also, I find very interesting and also important to maybe think outside of the only performing world. So one example is that many young artists actually have their own festivals or their own concert series. I myself have my own festival in Greece and it's taking place for the ninth time already this summer in August on the island of Lesbos. And there are many, many artists that have things like that, their own festival or their own little concert series or their own little projects. And that is, for example, something to consider. Then, of course, there is the big world of teaching. Many performing artists also have positions as teachers, whether it is teaching privately or teaching at a music school or teaching at a university as a professor. There are so many different ways that you can teach or teaching online, so many ways that you can teach. And that is another way to approach being a concert pianist that lives off of being a pianist alone. Especially us pianists that don't have the option to enter an orchestra and create a stable monthly income like that, which most instrumentalists can do. I think it is important that if we stay in the freelance space, so being a professor, of course, would also create a stable income, but if we stay in the freelance space, that we actually create income from many different things. So it could be the teaching thing, the performing thing, the organizing thing, whether that is your concert series. Um, you can find many different things to create income, recording an album and selling it. I think it is very helpful to have many legs to stand on when you're a freelance concert pianist. So having said all of that, it's probably self-evident that my answer to who can become a concert pianist and what it takes to become a concert pianist is maybe a little bit discouraging to people, but that is not at all what I want to do with this video. I do not want to discourage you. I want to encourage you to open your mind up to many different possibilities. I want to discourage you from just sitting in your practice room if you've put in so much work and basically have dedicated your life to piano playing. Don't think, okay, I'm just going to be sitting here in my practice room and practicing and just wait for my career to unfold because it won't. I just want to encourage you to think outside of the box and to go out there into this world and show everyone what you're capable of. So really try to um, sell yourself, even if that might not be in your nature, which I completely understand. Being a musician doesn't go hand in hand with being someone that constantly wants to present themselves and sell themselves, but try to really show people what you're about create a product that is of value to the to the classical music market and present it. I really want to encourage you to believe in yourself. Now, if you are a grown-up and are right now looking to change careers and are thinking of maybe becoming a concert pianist, I would say that that is probably going to be very hard. However, could you do something within the classical music world that you love so much and that you know so much about? Yes, absolutely. I just would not say 
that your expectation should be that you will be financially stable just by earning money from performing concerts if you start like that. I would encourage you to find your financial income from somewhere else and then have piano or classical music as a hobby or as a passion. I have made a video in the past titled, is it too late to start playing the piano? And I was very clear in saying it is never too late to start playing the piano. Playing the piano is one of the greatest things that you can do for your mind. It is so stimulating for the brain. Everything is working, the creative side, the cognitive side, the logical thinking side, the motoric side, everything is stimulated. Using both hands at the same time means that both sides of the brain are being stimulated. So playing the piano is something that I would recommend to anyone at any age, at any stage, any level. It really is great and it can make you so profoundly happy and it can be deeply fulfilling being able to play a beautiful melody or play a song that you love is something that can really be gratifying and that can make you feel so special. So I would definitely recommend that you play the piano if this is something that you love. When I'm talking about whether you should make it a career, I would say that all the preconditions that I mentioned before need to be met and you need to be an individual that is very resilient, that can take a lot of no's because that is also something that you will hear a lot on your path towards becoming a concert pianist, someone that has a strong character and that believes in themselves and that really believes in the power of music because that is what is going to keep you going on this not so easy path, but at the end, definitely very rewarding path. I hope that you found this video interesting and helpful. Let me know your thoughts on this subject. Let me know if there are any aspiring pianists that are watching this video. And also if there are people that maybe thought of making it a career at some point, but then decided to go into a different direction. I want to tell a quick story about that that just came to my mind. When I was studying, there was a, a student, a piano student, that was really very good in the class of um, Professor Kemmerling that I studied with. She was maybe, I would say, 23, 24 years old. She had dedicated her entire life to piano and she was amazing. And I remember that at 24, she finished her master's exam and then she stopped and she went into consulting, actually. And until today, she's a, a business consultant. And I remember I was very young then, I was maybe 12 when this happened. And I remember thinking, wow, why did she stop? And thinking if she doesn't think she can make a career as a concert pianist, then who will? And I'm just saying the story to show you that it is a hard road. And if you have tiny doubts, then it is something to definitely consider. And she's very happy doing what she does right now. I think she would also have been able to become a concert pianist, but that's the route that she chose. So there are many ways to become happy as a pianist. I think she still plays today, just not um, as a way of earning her money. And yes, let me know your thoughts. Let me know your position on this topic. And I will see you again in my next video next week. Hopefully it is finally going to be Chopin Study Opus 10 number four. Thank you so much for watching. If you enjoyed this video, leave it a like and subscribe to my channel. That would help me a lot. And I will see you again in my next video next week. Bye.